game enthusiasts, game developers, and aspiring game developers, and any other odd people who might be among the crowd. It's really nice to see such a crowd gathered over here today. And um, it's, it's genuinely, I mean, it's, it's genuinely groundbreaking to be able to finally meet up uh, frequently and talk so casually on, on video games and video game development. It's something we've been needing for a, for a very long time. So, and recently we've been having lots of great initiative of this, uh, this, this type as well. So I'd like to take this opportunity to first and foremost thank Ashley and Gordon and the other key, um, members of the Institute of Digital Games team for hosting um, this monthly meetup and uh, to Dirk for, for inviting me over to give this presentation as part of the first uh, in the meetup. Um, yes, I'm seeing lots of familiar faces. Um, some of you already know me, some of you don't. So for the benefit of those who don't, my name is Alan Luca and <laughs> well, I don't think I'm fooling anybody. Maybe this is, this is a better representation of myself as the Batman. But anyway, my point is that, like, just like the Batman, I've got two identities. By day, I'm a software developer at Hopsoft Model, where I lead the team, um, and we work on producing um, network security software, remote connectivity software, uh, so lots of <coughs> low-level network programming stuff. Uh, I get to try out lots of different technologies, do lots of interesting research. So, by night, I'm co-founder and technical lead at Five and Quarter Games. Uh, my role in the project is to um, take care of the technical aspect of, of, of the work we do. Um, I wanted to mention this, but I have forgotten. Um, I'm trying to keep this, this uh, presentation as flowing and as short as possible, and as casual as possible, so please um, you know, feel free to butt in with questions if you have any as well. Yeah, um, I started off um, yeah, at a very young age, interested in, in the mechanics of video games. Uh, my first PC, uh, my first computer was the Amiga 500 Plus, and I was always interested in the, in the mechanics of video games. I always trying that there was this one game, one particular game of 19 Stealth Fighter by Microprose, um, the same people who eventually went on to work on the Civilization games. There is the, the box over there. Um, and, you know, I was always wondering how, how the hell do they they make this stuff work and yeah, all the sorts of weird stuff which goes through the mind of, a, of an eight-year-old trying to understand something like this but doesn't make sense at all. But anyway, my, first, my very first contact with um, the world of video game development came um, a bit later when my friend uh, invited me over to this place to play uh, this game had just got. And that game was Unreal first one, 1998. Now, um, my, this friend of mine, he, he sat me in front of his PC and he made me play through one of the most intense sequences in the game, where you're thrown in this dark, winding corridor, lights go out, and you're made to fight one of these baddies over here, these green monsters, card warriors. Needless to say, uh, I got my guts uh, shanked out of my belly and, and, and nearly pissed myself in the process. Um, uh, my friend asked me if I wanted to take this game home with me and I said, hello. <laughs> three, three days passed, I couldn't stop thinking about this game and I asked him for it, gave it to me, installed it, played it, loved every second of it. But the really interesting thing about this game was that it shipped with Unreal Editor. Now this was rather, it wasn't commonplace for, for games back then, and it's 
very much still isn't nowadays to ship with the tool which um, the developers, the game developers, the, the, the developer for that game used to make most of the game. So through the use of the Unreal Editor, which came bundled with the game, uh, the player had access to the existing maps of the game. Uh, the player could uh, create new maps, modify existing maps. But not just that. The player also had access to the more core functionalities of the engine. And he, he could access these core functionalities by uh, modifying existing scripts, which the, um, the original game developers had written. Uh, or even creating scripts of his own. That way, the player would be creating his own content or modifying existing content in the game. So I, I dove into, um, I went into this this technology and started playing around with it. One of the one of the first mods I had done was there was this spider, one of the monsters in the game and he, a uh, tiny spider, he follows you around and when he gets close enough to you, starts hacking at you with his um, claws or whatever. Um, so I modified the script so that uh, I changed his behavior so that as soon as he gets uh, to a certain point, a certain distance away from the player, he jumps towards the player and explodes in midair, causing a very bloody and violent um, explosion. Um, the interesting thing was that. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, a few years later, Unreal Tournament 2004 was released. And this is the, the intro scene, uh, the NVIDIA logo. There you've got it a spider mine. So the uh, point here is, do not. Um, uh, uh, this is something I, I've heard over and over again since I've uh, gotten more involved in the world of game development. Ideas are overrated. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy to come up with an idea. And chances are, when you do, there's someone else who has the exact same idea or a better version of it. So, you know, don't be overprotective of your ideas. Share your ideas. Let people criticize them. Break them. Make them better. What is really special, what takes effort to do, is the actual effort to get that idea and make it into, some, into a product. But anyway. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so um, after this experience with Unreal Editor, I went on to um, study at the University of Malta, graduated in my IT um, degree, and I, I left the island to work for a year in Germany. Um, during that year, I had lots of free time on my hand, and I uh, used that free time, uh, invested my time in learning graphics and game programming. Um, so I researched a lot into technologies like DirectX 9 at the time, OpenGL, SDL, um, HLSL, lots of graphics programming um, technologies. And in the process even learned something about game programming. Um, since then, that was back in 2007, um, there were a string of projects I was working on, my own projects, which never saw the light of day. Um, and at one point in 2012 I said, listen, I've had enough of this, starting projects and never seeing them through. So I met up with a few of my friends, my best friends, and we said, listen, um, let's get something done. I find it difficult to keep myself focused. Um, with your help, I'll be able to keep myself focused more and make a better game. And, well, that was before Fire Quarter Games was set up. Um, a few months before, in fact. Um, we had started meeting up and coming up with some game concepts. 
One of them, a particular one, was particularly interesting, was codenamed Project Bloodbath. And it was a kind of um, lemmings clone. Um, I'm sure some of you know of uh, know the game lemmings. Uh, the aim of lemmings was to save these cute green haired little critters. Um, yes, and the object of Project Bloodbath was to get them all killed in a peaceful, <laughs> violent, gory, and gruesome and grueling ways. All of them. Anyway. Um, Shortly after we started doing this, um, the uh, uh, Malta Digital Games Fund, first edition of the Malta Digital Games Fund, was announced. Um, we were ha very happy about that, and we um, we immediately started working on the on the on proposing the concept for the fund. Um, so yeah, so. Now we got the application form, the guidelines, and we met a couple of snags. First one, the, we couldn't have any violence in our game, so we had to make a few changes. Um, we renamed our, our uh, 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 the second one was, was you have to be a, a registered company or partnership or cooperative to apply for the funding. So uh, we uh, did away with like 90% of our initial concepts, um, and, and started coming up with, with a few other concepts and established Five and Quarter Games as, as a formal company. Um, the process of establishing um, ourselves as a formal partnership was a bit grueling, to say the least, uh, but we, we managed um, and we vowed to when we're done with the process, uh, post an, an article or some, something of the sort, a guide to help other startups um, formalize their own company. If you visit our website, findwhatthewatergames.com, if you're interested, uh, you can find this guide and, and you know, see if it helps you out if you're interested. Anyway, one of the um, proposals we came up with for the fun was Time Heist. Um, time Heist was originally conceptualized as uh, an isometric um, adventure game, similar to Fallout, for example. Um, we took great, great care into um, you know, marketing our game in our uh, application form. Uh, is there anybody over here who, will, uh, who intends on, on applying? To, uh, for this year's Motors and Games Fund. One, two, two. Well, that's a bit disappointing. <laughs> I, I would have expected more, but anyway. Um, yes, uh, where was I? Yes. So, um, Time Heist was initially conceptualized as, a, as a, a, an isometric adventure game. Um, and in it, the, the player would uh, be able to travel back through time and visit um, locations which are uh, relevant to Maltese history, um, interact with characters which are, uh, who are um, you know, significant to Maltese history, and he's on a quest to to thwart the efforts of this mysterious villain who uh, appears hell bent on altering the course of history in a chaotic way. Um, yes, we we made sure to market our, our game as much as possible, so we marketed the educational element, although we want we want Time Heist not to be an edutainment game in and of itself. We want it to be a game which cultivates an interest in the player to, when he puts the game, the game down, you know, look up um, <coughs> facts about Maltese history um, in his spare time. I always bring the same example, Shogun Total War. I had never been interested in, in the Shogunate period um, of Japan's history until I played Shogun Total War. Um, I found myself on Wikipedia 
looking up information on the Japanese shogunate um, after playing Shogun Toku War. So that's what we, we want to do with Time Heist, one of the things we want to do with Time Heist. We also took care to market the team. Um, since Time Heist um, was a rather, is, is projected to be a rather large game, we, we, uh, we knew that we would need a sizable team, a team with individual, composed of individuals with very, with very varied uh, talent, talents and backgrounds. So uh, we formed uh, a team of really um, talented people and we marketed that team as much as possible, as, as much as we could, could um, in, the propos in the proposal. Um, the uh, Motor Digital Games Fund administration were still in the process of kind of finding their feet and the first time around in 2012. In fact, uh, the information session we had a couple of weeks ago for this edition of the Digital Games Fund, um, you know, two years ago, the same information session was delivered to us a week, just a week before the deadline, the submission deadline. Um, I am really glad to see that they, uh, the administration have pulled their socks up recently. So if any of you are even remotely interested in, in make, making some, turning an idea he has, into a real game, go for it. Go for it. I encourage it as strongly as I can. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, um, ah, I wanted to mention something about the team as well. Um, since the, the start of, of the... since we um, proposed the project, the, uh, the team changed. A lot, uh, and even the game concept changed. Um, uh, but still, we still have a, a very varied team full of really talented individuals. I'm taking care of the technical stuff. Clint Mitzi is co-founder and uh, project manager. Jean Rincard, the friend who had introduced me to Unreal uh, at work, um, is also co-founder, and he helps us with game design. Uh, Chris Camilleri helps us with game design. Francis Gershi, really, really, really talented um, scriptwriter, and he helps us with um, level design. Moira Zara, Mark Kluna, character artists, both teach at MCAST um, Art and Design. Um, Adam Lawrence, he's our environment artist, artist. he makes our scenes for us, um, and so on. Uh, I'm sure there, there are lots of people I'm leaving out, but these people have, have been most instrumental to where we've got so far. Um, and one thing I would like to mention as well is that all of these people, including myself, are doing this in their own free time. We all have our own, um, our own full-time jobs. You know, we're people like all of you over here. So we're not robots um, and we're not, not really wealthy people who can afford to spend a day at home not working and a deal um, income and you know we work on, on this project alone. Uh, we have our own responsibilities and this is very much a labor of love. Um, the funds themselves from the Multi Digital Games Fund are nowhere close to enough to pay for the talent you need to make a game of such magnitude. So you know the, what funds we have we use to tool up and we're using to kind of um, give, give us a tiny token to, to, to the people working on the project with us. Um, so work is practically done in, in our free time and on a voluntary basis. Uh, as I mentioned as well, the game concept changed very much as well. Initially it was, it was um, conceived as, a, as an isometric um, game, so you'd have an isometric perspective and we had started, I had started doing work on an isometric engine from scratch and an isometric world builder from scratch. Um, the, fund that missed, the fund mentors, uh, I approached the fund mentors with this and they told us, listen, don't build an engine from scratch. 
use a third party engine. Later I uh, discussed this with my, uh, the artists on my team and they said, listen, we would like uh, um, a more traditional to the point and click um, adventure game perspective. So all of this work, work out of the window. Um, similarly, we had uh, plans on, and this was in the, the proposal as well, plans on including a 3D spherical panorama kind of gameplay in, in the game where the, the player would be placed in the middle of a hollow sphere and uh, such an, it's called an equi rectangular uh, projection. This kind of projection is projected inside the hollow sphere. And when this happens, um, you get a kind of seamless 360 degree view. Um, again, the artists didn't like this. They said it contrasts too much with the um, stylized artwork of the game. The mentors shot it down, continued to shoot, shoot it down, prototype out of the window. Moral of the story, do not get overly attached to the work, uh, to the work you do and to the ideas you have. They, uh, you very likely have to throw away some of them. Um, yeah, um, I will not go into detail on the um, technical and design <coughs> challenges I, I uh, encountered when, when um, making the game and making the game engine. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can always uh, visit gamedev.com.nt and uh, read the article I, I, um, sub I wrote a few days ago. Thank you, Simon, for, for posting that for me. And there's a, a, a whole article on some of the most interesting technical and design challenges I, I went through when, when working and I'm still working on the engine for this 2D point and click adventure game. So I touch um, some concepts with the script engine. Uh, the game Time Heist as a 2D point and click adventure game is extremely narrative oriented. So a script engine is something which is really important. I go into some detail as well on the scenes. Uh, to the, again, 2D point and click adventure games have uh, put lots of emphasis on, on, on the scene, on the environments. And, uh, and uh, you know, in many other games you'll get uh, textures which are reused lots of places and stuff like that. Um, to the point of click adventure games do not afford that luxury. Every scene must be completely unique. And I go into some detail about that. And characters, of course, you know, characters fill the world of a 2D point and click adventure game. Characters convey your narrative. So I go into some detail about that as well. But anyway, um, uh, what I will do now, I will end by showing a brief uh, video. Uh, not exactly brief, but we can have any questions. I can get any questions while this plays. Um, uh, this shows this shows uh, yeah. This shows um, uh, part of the prologue act, the tutorial act of the game. Uh, so this is time heist. Um, you have your characters, you have your um, your animations, you have your bugs, and the. the the teacher character isn't supposed to stop freeze mid frame over here, but anyway, because I have to still iron out. Um, and this this uh, scenario is is you know meant to walk the player through the basic um, gameplay um, mechanics of, of of the game. Anyway, so any any questions, particular questions, queries about the fun as well? Yeah. How long did it take to develop such, such a game? Yes, um, considering that this is uh, completely a labor of love and um, everybody works on it in his own, own free time, uh, we've gone 
a long way, and I'm really proud of what we've achieved so far in, in, in you know, considering the amount of time we dedicated to this project. Um, the funds were allocated to us mid-2013. They took a while to, to, to actually uh, give us the funds. So, as such, work started in, in earnest in around June 2013, so it's been a year so far. Um, so yeah, um, we've got to a point where most of the technical stuff is out of the way. So the 2D point and click engine is, is very much there, very much works the way we want to, sort of, kind of. Uh, uh, that text isn't supposed to be there, for example, that's another issue I need to buy enough. Um, but uh, we've got to a point where what we need is content generation. So, and what we will, we will be needing for a long time to come is content generation. So we need the character artists to uh, give us their characters, the environment artists to give us our levels, script writers to write a script, um, you know, me to sort out all these bugs, um, riggers to um, bring everything together, and that takes an inordinate, inordinate amount of time and energy. And I didn't expect this to take this much energy out, out of you, but it does. Uh, but still, I mean, we're, we're, we're moving along in the right direction. Um, me and my friends are also working on a game uh, in a part-time fashion. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you organize time yes. way, or schedule stuff? Because a problem that we find in sort of is to Having each having their own responsibilities, it's difficult to schedule and meet up and uh, organize work. How, how, how do you go about it? Yes, uh, that's I think one of our you know most prominent challenges: um, scheduling work, meeting up, and coordinating such a large team. Um, we use first of all we use an online collaboration space. Uh, we use Assembla, there is version control for, for the technical people, there is a wiki for the game designers. Um, we meet up regularly, either at my place or at Skyparks, or, and now there is the Microsoft, uh, there is the um, takeoff uh, in business incubator as well. Uh, if you're interested, you can speak with people over there and they might, might give you access to, to the premises as well. So we meet up very regularly. Um, correspond uh, using emails a lot and a lot and a lot. Um, deadlines. We try to set deadlines and try to respect them, but that turns out to be easier said than done. Especially the artists. Artists tend to obsess about um, their work. Uh, they they tend to. Uh, I think I think by their nature. Uh, artists tend to be perfectionists, so they will not give you. Uh, ex excuse me. Th there's lots of lots and lots and lots of placeholder artwork over here. So what you see will not be what you get. So anyway, long time to, to give you, um, you know, the uh, the artwork. They often find it difficult to churn out um, characters and and and, and the environments. And you know, in, in this game, we in this situation, we want artwork we can churn out. We want art, artwork we can you know work with. Hulling, but we we polish it later on. But I, I we need stuff to work with to, to build our game. With. So yes, that's basically it. Deadlines. Try to respect the deadlines. Meet regularly. Regularly. Meet frequently. How do you keep the team motivated? Such a long project. The team appears to be self-motivated so far, so we're we're really, really, really happy about that. Um, we again we organize frequent get-togethers. Uh, recently, for the first act after the tutorial act, we'll be going back to the to the um, Stone Age to the um, Ismin Neolithic and. Uh, most of the first act will be set in Gozo. So we organized a weekend where we all went to Gozo, visited lots of locations, took photos, had a nice weekend at a nice farmhouse. No, that kind of stuff. 
team, build, team building activities as well. Um, so yes, uh, we do offer a, a modest, a very, very, very modest sum from the funds we have available, but I mean that's as much as we, we can offer to the to the um, members on our team. So you know, I don't try to fool them by saying that, that, that telling them, listen, you get uh, this much um, remuneration for for the for the work you're gonna do. I mean, no, you're, you're, you're working practically on a voluntary basis. If this game, you know, uh, eventually ends up making us millions, uh, then of course the, the, the people who worked on the project will be likewise uh, remunerated. We, we are thinking of um, writing up a contract as well, which um, puts in some royalties for the people who, who, who are working on, on, the, on the project. So, yeah. What's the scheduled date and platforms for the game? Yes, um, we are planning on, have, we are developing initially for the PC. Only because it's a platform I am most familiar with. So, you know, I started with the easiest platform for me. Um, we were uh, projecting an end 2014 release, but um, I don't see that happening in this or any other lifetime. Um, <laughs> but uh, but we are the, the good thing, the great thing is that we are uh, we are having you know very vi vi visual um, milestones, very um, visual progress. So yeah, we, we're confident that we that we will eventually see it through. Nice. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, you said that the Malta Digital Games Fund put some restrictions on you. Which yeah. were they again? Yeah, um, basically.